Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is take a look at how we can create more realistic materials uh, using imperfections, bump maps, blending between different textures, maybe even different materials, um, and creating uh, materials that have a lot more realism, a lot more depth, just using um, a diffuse color or in a texture or something in there. So let's go ahead and get started. So imperfections have become very popular. Um, Grayscale Gorilla and a lot of other places have different packs. Cinema 4D actually has some in the asset browser. Um, what I've done in this scene is uh, grabbed the shader ball and kind of modified it, put a redshift material on it. Um, I then switched the renderer to redshift, created a dome light, and actually grabbed this um, HGRI from the asset browser uh, as well. Oh, fun. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem though. So, with that, um, we can now kind of get started here. And if you just search for imperfections, you'll see that we have pretty decent selection available to us. And I'm just gonna grab a couple of them here, maybe this one um, and fingerprints. You may need to drag them in a couple of times since if you haven't already downloaded them, that's kind of stop you from being able to drag them in the first time correctly. Now, what you'll notice is we have some variations in color here, and it's important to understand how those variations of color um, affect roughness. So roughness is a zero to one property where zero is represented by black and one is represented by white. So that's what we need to keep in mind with these images here. Okay, so gray is going to have some pretty high roughness value, whereas this one um, has some darker values. Okay, and if I just plug these into roughness, I'm actually going to change this to say gold so we can see this a bit more. Um, we should start to see this pretty quickly, and we can see how these imperfections are starting to show up. It just gives us a surface that doesn't look quite as fake. Um, or clean as we get uh, with traditional materials unless we go in and do something like this. Now, there's other ways you can kind of break up the surface like this. A bump map is a good way as well. Um, we'll see how we can work with that. Um, but let's take a look at this other one here with the fingerprints. Okay, zoom in a little bit more here. Now, if they're not showing up like you would expect um, and you want to work with the values a little bit more, whichever one of these that might be, you can create a ramp. And if you drag that in line, it will connect it up for you. Um, and now if I solo this, we can come in here and work with these values. And so if I want to see those fingerprints a bit more, I'm going to bring in that white point. Okay. If I unsolo this, we should be able to see them quite a bit better. And I could kind of keep doing that even more getting them to show up more and more. Now, what we could do here, right, is combine these in a lot of different ways. Um, we could use a color mix, okay? Take this one to input one, this one to input two, actually the ramp and then drag that into our roughness. And so we should get a combination of both as long as we just this mix amount. And in fact, we could even put say a noise or something um, as a way to work with this mix amount. The problem with the this though, is that you know our values kind of ended up differently. So not as light as the first one, lost a lot of the darkness here. So just mixing these isn't necessarily the best way to combine them. Instead, we want to use kind of blending modes, multiply, add, and you could do this using a color layer. Okay, now this can be a bit complex and perhaps even more than you need uh, with two textures, but you could load one into the color layer here, one into layer one, and then um, work with your different blending modes. Your mask is essentially your opacity. Um, and you could do it that way. Or you could use, say, the add node, which allows us to add two things together. It's also a multiply and works pretty much the same way. So I could take 
and put one here and put two and do this to get both. And what we should see now, um, maybe not quite as well as I was hoping, but we should see the fingerprints or the brighter values of this one um, being added on top of um, our gray one here. So maybe what I could do to see this a bit better would be to bring that in. And so now let's see. Yeah, we can see them a lot more. That can be a way to combine these. Now, I think I pushed it a bit too far, but hopefully you get the idea there. So another way we could take this further would be to add in a bump map. And while we may want to use our this uh, texture here, you know, we do want to be careful because um, how much is a fingerprint really going to, you know, affect um, the, the surface and how smooth it is. So uh, perhaps we can come back here to our imperfections and find something like a scratches. I do like how it shows the sizes in there. It's quite nice. We have our scratches, do a bump map. And load that in to the overall bump. Now, typically when I'm combining uh, properties like reflection roughness and um, bump map, I like to work with one at a time at first so I can see just what um, each property is bringing to the table. So we, we set up roughness like that. Now I can take my bump map, lower that to say 0.1, zoom in and go, yeah, that's probably still a bit too much. So do 0.01. And really, since these are scratches, I might want to get zoomed in and make sure that they're going the correct direction. And let's see if they look better negative. Eh, maybe a little. So that looks pretty good. And honestly, this achieves a very similar kind of end result than what we were doing with the roughness. So when we combine these together, things can get a bit crazy and it can be hard to tell, you know, what is really responsible for what. Um, so that's why I like to work with them individually but now we have something that looks a lot more natural uh you know weathered even and speaking of weathered we have our curvature node now the curvature node if i just connect this to the diffuse color and solo it allows us to really kind of isolate the curved surfaces here and it's really these curved surfaces where things might get dinged or scratched um, or, you know, the metal might, metal could flake off and, or start to rust. Um, I guess metal really can't flake off, but maybe if it was painted, it could. So this can be useful for, um, really kind of isolating the roughness and things like that and getting them ex in different areas. Um, there's other ways we can do that as well. Um, but what we could do to kind of show this would be to use, say, a material blender. So I'm going to create a material blender. I'm also going to need another material. And with the material blender, it's actually going to be what goes into our output, um, which can be problematic uh, with if you're using displacements. But they do have a displacement blender, which can help. I'll connect our gold material as the base and our new material as um, layer one, the material color. Now for each of these, you have a material color, which is where you load in the material itself, a blend color, which can be anything from a color to a node, um, and whether or not you want this to be additive. So we don't really have a whole lot of control blending mode wise here, um, but we can do additive. So just so we can see this, let's make this red as if it was kind of rust. Um, and now what I can do is experiment with how I want to blend these two materials together. I could start with that curvature node. Okay, and connect that to the layer one blend color. And we can see that is looking pretty good. Okay, and if we once again just kind of solo this, we can see, yep, we have those brighter values, those darker values. I do like to use a ramp um, to uh, kind of push that a bit further. You'll notice we're only getting a little bit of that. Um, that red, not it completely. So a ramp can allow us to get more. And we could use, say, an add 
to help break this up a little bit. Okay. So that way um, we don't have these really kind of harsh lines where this stops. So what I could do is say take in noise. Right. Actually, max on noise always just gives you so much more. And let's do, um, we'll do add. Could do multiply as well. Say similar in this particular instance. So I'll take input one, input two, and connect that to our blend. Now I'm not entirely sure what we're going to get. Yep. Something maybe a bit too, too red uh, at the moment here. Um, but I really want to solo the noise and just kind of work with that a bit because, um, you know, that's kind of where we're running into problems here. So why don't we start by maybe changing it to, I don't know. Yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And keep in mind, we're adding it. So we're adding all these brighter values here. So I almost don't want that many, um, uh, that much brightness. And I can come in here to the output section of this and really just kind of turn this down, okay? Um, interesting that it stopped updating there. Um, there we go, well, came back. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, and so now we end up with that red material in some other places. Now, if I wanted to just break up those lines, um, I would want to actually do a multiply. So let's see what that would look like. Okay, there we go. I don't know why they didn't finish, you know, spelling that. Wouldn't have been that hard. But we can connect this to the blend color. And what that will do is it's just it's adding that darker value on top of the brighter. So we end up with, um, you know, some edges there uh, that are very natural and don't have very good definition. Really, I don't see a lot of that red at all. So we have to be a bit careful that's starting to get a little bit better. Um, brightness wise, maybe I can add some contrast here as well to help break this up. There we go. So now we're starting to introduce that. I still think the curvature nodes a, a bit too dark. I may want to add a ramp to kind of just bump up those values, but we're starting to um, hopefully kind of see how we can work with this and get something that is more unique. And I could, you know, multiply again to add some really fine scratches um, on top of this, uh, though I would want to push that white value um, a little bit further there. But yeah, a number of different ways you can mix and combine. One of my favorites is just, you know, a noise. And, you know, I've kind of ignored the bump map for um, this kind of blend, but I definitely would want to take that into consideration as well, where those scratches are using those values to help decide where we would see one material um, or another. Okay, and so that will just about do it for this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the, the look into Redshift and some of those other nodes. There's plenty of other interesting nodes as well that perhaps I can make a video about at some point. But if there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know and take care.